Hello, everybody. This is Martin Pitella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And with me today is Emma Flanagan. Emma, well, I have known Emma for about four years. It was 2019. And we very innocently met over uh, what Emma started calling Amazing Soak. Anyway, Emma, welcome. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Martin. Yeah. Uh, Yes, I would, at like that to time do, I would like to do a little bit more of an intro, which is this. Four years have gone by. In, in the meantime, we, well, I say it this way. I remember how you were so enthused about how much you could help people from physical injury. Because with, with your product, we deliver to the tissue a huge amount of oxygen. Yeah. That was that was the extent of it. That was the size of it. And so we had people, if you run a marathon, you create a gigantic oxygen deficit. You put yourself into a bathtub with four ounces of amazing soak and you recover instead of in one week, in one hour. Exactly. Yeah, that was it. And then uh, with chronic, uh, chronic pain and inflammation, able to help with that too. Right. And, is, and I thought that was like, like all of it. Well, yeah, and it is a miracle in itself, right? Like a person yes. who has fibromyalgia feels all day long as if they ran a marathon yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. And right. they can replenish the oxygen deficit, stop that inflammatory process, reverse symptoms, and have a normal what? day, weeks, I mean, it might not even come back. Who knows? Yeah, and Depends so we should is. still we should still explain if a person has chronic pain. That oh yeah, like absolutely. Let me let me tell you the way it works exactly with the systemic use of the soak. When amazing soak goes in the water, it have hyperoxygenates it. Okay, but when people hear oxygen, you know, don't take it literally. Is, is an ensemble of bioactive oxygen species that are produced in our body, the mitochondria, okay? And, 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 and it exists in other places. So we have a hyperoxygenation there now of our body, which doesn't have the same amount of oxygen as the water in the top, creates a, a, an unbalance there. So now we have hyperoxygenated water and not that, much oxygen in our body, which we are mostly water, that even in the bones, there is a lot of water. Right. So what happens is that uh, every system, it, 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 it tends to go towards equilibrium. So now in order to equilibrate that, uh, these oxygen molecules start penetrating into yeah. the body. Yeah, we should, okay? you're describing that we can create this abundance of oxygen Exactly. Species, ROS, reactive oxygen species. Yes. And, the and the, the reason that it happens is because these molecules are bioidentical. It's not that you're going to soak in milk and then milk is going to go through your skin. It doesn't happen like that. These are bioidentical to the deficit that we have inside our body. So they penetrate naturally and the electrolytes also go with it. So now they're inside the body. Now, by ionic diffusion, they're going to continue to move in all the biological fluids, okay? And this ionic diffusion, uh, uh, it doesn't depend on us, where we also am, I'm embodying my product, okay? It's not that the molecules are gonna go wherever they are. It's whenever they, whatever they are needed because the ionic diffusion has to do with the attraction of charges, the ionic attraction. Because I was wondering, well, how is so effective? Because it goes more where the inflammation is at. Well, that's the region of the body that is attracting and trying to, to, to draw oxygen to them. And that's where, that's how, how it's gonna be uh, dictated, you know, the movement of the product. Exactly. That's pretty yeah. much what happens uh, when we soak systemically. And then that has nothing to do with the oxygen 
that we inhale when we breathe or the oxygen that goes into the hemoglobin. Now, if you're measuring the oxygen with an oximeter, it's going to increase indirectly. Why? Because now we are supplying the oxygen directly to the interstitial fluid and the hemoglobin is not discharging as much oxygen because the demand goes down because we are supplying from another side and then you're going to see the, ox the oxygen in the blood increasing. Okay, so to give an example, so if I have somebody who's measuring, uh, I don't know, 95% uh, oxygen perfusion on when they put it on their finger, yes, I put their feet in a foot soak with a tablespoon of amazing soak, mm -hmm. inside of 20 minutes, they will be mm -hmm. absorbing more oxygen and the perfusion sh should improve, right? Yeah. With their foot, I don't. I don't want to quote it because I don't know how how much is going to be uh, um, impacting the oximeter. But I had people going into the top with 80, 77 satur oxygen saturation level, and they saw for twenty minutes, and it's 98, 99. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for sure, it's going to increase with the with the feet, but also depends how much. You know, it well, we, should, we should know that I've, I've been doing this for 25 years. When you make a foot soak, the lymphatic system picks it up and the lymphatic pump drives it inside of... Yes, it's minutes. just that I haven't measured the foot, but I'll, I'll tell you what. I had elderly people that soak their feet and they get more alert within yes. five minutes. They start being more right. into it because they are better oxygenated. Right on. Exactly. Absolutely. So this is the basic science of the, well, the complicated science of all of the different <laughs> oxygen species, that it's not oxygen, the stuff you breathe, it is the oxygen. It's dissolved oxygen ions, yes. And uh, so this is, this is the explanation how it happens systemically when you do body soak. And, and also, you know, when you do body part soak and all that, it happens the same way. And even when you do wet compresses, you always need to make sure that you have that wet bridge that allows the, the molecules to uh, to penetrate in the body. Yeah, it has to go through the skin. So yes. what I would like to say here is that the chemical that you're using is, it's not a real secret because the EPA has authorized it, right? Like we yes. understand what this is. It's not. This, this has a name, I think it's called Fulton Chloride Blend or something like yeah. that. You know, there are a few health, uh, like they call it hacking uh, chemicals that come from the water treatment world mm -hmm. because the same comes that we are mostly water. So it makes sense that if we, if you know that those products that are good for purifying and elevating the energy in the water uh, are gonna also do something good for our health, okay? Right. In the, uh, you know, like chlorine dioxide is one of them, ozone is one of them, okay? They started, I mean, they still are in the water treatment world, but they also have applications for health. So we are kind of in that same category. Now, um, relative to structured water, which I hear a lot, but nobody has like a really good definition, uh, redox water, uh, all of the above. What I can tell you is that, that we energize the water. So mm -hmm. the water is the solvent uh, that holds the, the biochemical reactions in the body. And when you start with a higher ener energy level, in that water as opposed to dead water, in that same proportion is going to improve the metabolic uh, activity that is relying on the on the biochemical reactions mm -hmm. on that water. Right. So that's, yeah, so we that's have the, where... yeah, we have the combination of the medium and the, the solvent and the, the whatever, yes. solute, yes. right? Yeah, so all that, like when you improve the redox level of the water, mm -hmm you know, then all the metabolic processes are going to be that much, you know, enhanced right. because now you start with a better, with a better quality water. Yes. Yeah. What I want to address is this. Uh, people call me and say, well, but this smells like bleach or this smells like public water pool. And I'm saying, well, yes, but please remember 
This is not chlorine, the toxic chlorine. This is not the chlorine gas that you're smelling. What you're smelling is hypochlorous acid. Yes, yes. And, and, the, and the reason that I push for the bleachy, because the oxygen species, they don't have the bleachy flavor and they don't smell, okay? When the, when the water reaches a redox saturation level, okay, there is extra energy in the water, okay? Nothing is happening, but there is extra energy. So now the chloride electrolyte that we have in the formula is start binding to oxygen because there is extra energy in the water. And then they start forming a, a, a molecule of hypochlorous acid. Now, when that forms, that tells me that there is enough additional a reactivity in the in the in in this water that you prepare that when you inhale it you know or you, when you drink it it's going to be enough to take it further to support you further okay if you if if there is no bleach it's still gonna work i just don't know how much but i know when it has the bleach it taste to it that there is extra and then it's gonna take it get further yes and what I want to say is that this is not the same thing as drinking tap water that's been chlorinated. No, in fact, like babies that are cannot be bathed in like chlorinated water or people that, you know, don't drink tap water, they use this to offset the chlorine from the tap water. <laughs> Even. So Even, it neutralizes yeah. it, yeah. Exactly. It neutralizes it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, this is better than drinking water with uh, how people with okay. hydrogen peroxide. That tastes very bad. Uh, uh, or hydrogen peroxide, drink, iodine, uh, ozone. Uh, uh, what is this other one? The one that is uh, right? Uh, yeah, there is another one. Yeah, that that is for laundry. A laundry product that people put. Uh, it's a white powder. Oh, that would be borax. Borax. Yeah, I mean. This doesn't taste as bad as any of them. Oh, and mm. the other thing is, when you put it in the refrigerator, when you drink it cold, the, the bleachy flavor goes 50% gone because now the taste buds are cold and they don't they don't taste that much the bleach. So that's what I do. I prepare a gallon, keep it in the, my fridge, and then it's cold okay. and I don't mind it. Yeah, so you said this just in passing, the two magical words, which were, if you inhale it or if you swallow it. What I wanted to say, do you remember when uh, the COVID hit and uh, you you discovered that when you let people inhale this mist of this? Yes, yes. Oh, well, let me, okay, yeah, let me, because yeah, this was before COVID. So I always had the theory that this should be good for uh, pneumonia. Okay. And you know, so when I started amazing soak, I always, you know, I, that's one of the things that I'm thinking one day I'm going to try. So when COVID started and it, people, you know, we all thought that it was like a pneumonia. Uh, so my my dear friend, uh, she had been very sick. I called to check on her and she was on her last uh, leg pretty much. Shortness of breath, a lot of pain. Uh, it couldn't hold the air when, when she, she was shouldn't to have taken to the hospital, but she said she wouldn't go to the hospital because everybody was dying. So I went over there, got her in the bathtub, rolling. She couldn't, she couldn't be standing or she couldn't walk to the bathroom. Uh, we got her into the bathtub. Uh, so she was soaking. And in the meantime, I was preparing this machine that I had for uh, cleaning the, the pores of the, of the face. So it was getting, you know, it had a mask. Uh, to get a steam on your face. So when she came out, she came out walking and she said, wow, you know, most of my pain is gone. She, but she still had the shortness of breath. So we put her, I, uh, I prepared like a 5% concentration, pretty strong. She started breathing. Uh, it, it helped her to calm down. She was able to breathe a little easier. So she fell asleep uh, after like an hour and a half, two hours, I woke her up had her breath again, and then she was at that point, she was able to hold the breath. And I'm like, okay, you need to do this, you know, tomorrow when you wake up, uh, because at least I, I knew that she was out of danger. The next day she woke up, she did it again. She did it a total of four times within 24 hours. 
and she got out of bed, showered, uh, cooked, ate, <laughs> and that was it. No yes. more, no yes. more, no more COVID. And I'm like, wow, this is great. So I told my kids the same. I'm like, hey, you know, this worked because my kids wouldn't believe me. So I had to refer like, you know, it helped with somebody else. And uh, so then they started telling their friends and now we are like helping all these people. Uh, and I thought it was, it was normal, okay? Um, so the, there was a campaign about showing when people were getting out of COVID because it, it was the belief that most people were dying. And when they started showing on TV, people recovering from COVID, they had like the path to recovery. And I'm like, what is this path to recovery? So they're not like, like my people, they, they were done. No, this is like people, they were not gonna die. So now they have to recover. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this is not, <laughs> this is not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing complete resolution. And yeah. some people were even better than before getting, getting COVID. Uh, because the thing is, it's not, it's, it's, it's the way that we bypass the inflammation that was on the lungs, okay? Because when the oxygen is ionized, and that's what the lung, the alveolar does, it, it, it breaks down that molecule of oxygen, ionizes it, and delivers it to the hemoglobin. So now that is not happening. The hemoglobin, I mean, one of my theories, and I'm gonna say always is one of my theories because I don't, I'm not a doctor and I don't have a medical education, but the way I saw it was, the, the uh, hemoglobin couldn't drop the iron that is bound to, you know, be, because to replace it with an oxygen instead of the iron. So it went around on labs, taking labs, and now we have a high iron concentration, little, very little oxygen, and now you're getting the clots because now there is too much iron in the blood and yeah. nobody's getting oxygen. So we yeah. bypass the whole thing. And there's a whole chemistry that describes it. You know, this is the Fe2 versus the Fe3 ion, yes. where uh, one is the binding to the oxygen and the other one is not. And exactly, exactly. So then now let me see how all these products evolve. So we're going to go amazing, uh, all, uh, the all spray. Yeah, OK. okay? Yes, yeah. so so now we have this and, and I'm running crazy, loaning all my, anything that aerosolized, I was, you know, taking to people. I'm thinking there has to be a better way of doing it. And when people would go to the hospitals, the family couldn't go see them. So that was like jail. They couldn't bring a, a humidifier, a diffuser, nothing for them to bring. So I'm like, man, if they could do something, like they can sneak it in, you know, to give it to the people. And I'm expressing this, and one of my kids said, well, mom, how about a nasal spray? I'm like, how smart was that? So then I started getting, you know, yeah. looking for that in the craziness supply chain during a COVID. Yeah, well, you did find the uh, the nasal injector, which... Yes, so yeah. that was great. So that's how amazing O came. So now I'm getting feedback, okay? So COVID started February, March, so this is April, May, allergy season. So people that are using it, to prevent COVID, they are telling me they are not getting allergies. I'm like, really? And I, you know, I didn't know about allergies. So that's how the whole thing with the all spray, and I couldn't quite get, and they said that they love it because also I didn't know that when you use the allergy spray, you can only use it once a day because uh, you cannot use it, you know, like more okay. than once. Yeah, the, the commercial sprays are mostly steroidal, right? Yes, yes. So they like it because... Steroids, I... Well, for, for one thing, so to explain, right, the common medical approach is to try and shut down the histamine response of the immune system. So you're not dealing with the why or the root cause. All you're saying is stop it, right? Like it's sort of like you have a dog that's barking and you're yeah. just yelling at the dog, stop it. And then well, if that... the dog doesn't stop, you just muzzle his nose <laughs> well it's a, yeah it's an exaggerated reaction so we were able to tame that to equilibrate that is it acts like a mast cell stabilizer 
type of thing. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And then you That's... stabilize a mast cell, which is where the histamine is released. This yes. Is the granulation. Yes. When yes. you and shut that, that is... down, you no longer have the reaction. Yeah. I have observed a, a, a large affinity with mast cells and also explains why sometimes it gets hypersensitive and it feels like burning because it just goes to the mast cells. And these are cells that are designed for, for fast reaction of, of external uh, stimuli. Yes. So that explained that. And then we have people that, that, that the, the, um, the taste and the smell, even the fever was improved by just using the spray mm -hmm. without, without breathing. So it, it also had a systemic effect. I have people that they use the all spray for headaches. Oh. They say that it works better for headaches. I'm guessing that it's more of a sinus tension headaches. It works better than uh, anti uh, than the analgesic. So the uh, the issue with the burning in the nose, right? Yes. Like we have had a good number of people indeed report that burning because we had the higher concentration, so you diluted it. Yeah, then, I. But I in have the end, in the end, the solution is what? I have re I have reformulated it. it uh, three times, and now each time, the the percentage of people that report, you know, that it's burning, that it's uncomfortable, it has diminished significantly, and and right now, I I, it, it works for most for most people, and, and the thing is, even when it's like hypersensitive for some people, if they sometimes if they use it a week later, it doesn't work. Sometimes it burns me in the morning. And then in the in the afternoon it doesn't burn. I I don't really know what what's exactly happening. And the funny thing is, the the one that I put in the diffuser is more concentrated. Like I use in the diffuser a one two percent solution, and that doesn't burn. And even the nasal rinse also doesn't burn. So it's just the also I don't know what exactly is. Uh, but but it's not it's not hurting. It passes. It does what it's supposed to do, and that doesn't transfer into damage right. Right. at all. So let's just say that uh, even it though does, it may be painful, it's not damaging. No, no. And then one way of reducing the effect is if I spray it and I hold it and don't swear it with oxygen, which augments it, then it just passes and that's it. It just gets a little itchy. I just hold it. 30 seconds, it gets a little itchy and then and then passes and it doesn't burn. All right. Okay, so then uh, so then the second thing that happened was uh OH mist. Right. Okay, because now people is wearing masks. I couldn't stand the mask, uh, the taste of it, I kept changing it. Uh people were getting uh, uh breaking out the skin with the with the mask. And then I had this uh, a sanitizer, which is a 1% uh, concentration. And I just made this spray, you know, for myself, my family. Then I started giving it to people and they're reporting all this. Then my kids are start using it for their acne. Uh, I have people using it, you know, in the skin, if they get any, in the, in the skull, if they get any itchiness, uh, using it on, on the skin lesions and, uh, and then people, that were spraying it on the mask, like friends of mine that had to use, you know, they were teaching or, or just using the mask all the time. They were not breaking out and the skin was improving. So that's how OH mist uh, came about. And also for, as a hand sanitizer, uh, it wasn't drying the hands like alcohol yeah. as much. And then you can use it, you can use it in everything. I have to tell you, I use OH mist as deodorant. I haven't used deodorant. <laughs> like real deodorant. Ever. Yeah, it makes sense because it will, of course, the uh, underarm smell is caused by bacteria consuming the you protein. You control it, yeah. And, yeah. But so here's an interesting point. You sent me a video some time ago that was showing that when you raise the ORP past 650 millivolt, okay. even E. coli dies. Oh, yes. Right? So yes, when it... we raise the ORP, past certain level, microbes disintegrate. They cannot survive. Yes. And so I don't you... know any microbe that survives above 700 millivolts with my product. 
Right. Not that and, it might, I don't know any. Right. And the point is that when you spray this mist onto any surface, whether it's under arm or on my face or on my keyboard or on my telephone or whatever it is that I'm going to touch or the mask, it has the same effect. It wipes out the microbials. There is a clinical study that was done with this spray. Uh, it wasn't done by me. It was done by one of my customers. And they compared, and it was saying, uh, it's a company, I believe, in Arizona. And that's what they do. They do, I think it's called Clinical Studies USA. So they try this spray against 91% alcohol. And it was better at COVID than 91% alcohol. Right. Which that would know, be on on surface measured, right? That was yeah, that was a study. They were trying to come up with a with a sanitizing spray for hospitals. Right. So they they had that study done. Um, okay, so now we did OHBs, and then after that, then I saw you know then the, now we are discovering other uses, and and I came up with more sizes. That's how I started uh, came in with the two ounces. Uh, the eight ounces, you know, the smaller sizes. Yeah. And then for, for traveling, the two ounces, I love it. It's, it travels very well and it's uh, uh, very handy. So now we are in the summer of 2020 and I uh, got together with my first friend that was going to die, the one that was uh, in very bad shape. And she was telling me like, well, finally, they opened up the, the doctor's offices and she went to her ophthalmologist just weeks before uh, you know, her annual, it was gonna expire. And the doctor was very surprised because her vision had improved significantly. And I'm like, oh, what happened? She's like, I had double vision and now I don't have double vision. He cannot explain it. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. And I didn't say anything because I'm thinking it must have been the product because she had asthma before COVID and she had whooping cough. She had some situations. So after she recovered from COVID, she liked the product, the smell, and she just liked it and she just have it in her routine. And also she didn't want to get COVID again. So she used it for like three or four weeks, you know, sitting down after dinner and just like breathing it in. So she used it for quite a while. And I'm thinking, I bet it has to do with her using the product. So. I started for, I, I went to the store and I was checking uh, it, it ingredients and I was researching and I started formulating and with the first formula, it felt good. I gave it to a few people, magic. People were telling me like, oh, this is great. It feels very refreshing. Uh, I noticed myself, my eyes were very, very dry. I was using a night, gel at night to sleep if I wouldn't put the gel when I wake up, I couldn't open my eyes. I would like just rub them to get more tears into it, to get it to lubricate it because they were so dry. And, and it worked for me and it worked for other people, people that is smoked, that their eyes got red. I'm like, oh, this is great. So that's how the uh, cholerio came. Yeah, well, you and, actually uh, did a study, I remember uh, helping you. Yes, yes, and I'm going to go study. over that. Yeah. I just wanted to explain how all the products evolved after after COVID because, uh, you know, like everybody knows, I'm going to repeat it. I'm not a doctor. I'm a sanitary engineer. Yeah, let's just not uh, uh, dismiss your education. You're a full engineer. It's not I'm like a sanitary engineer. It's not like you're just somebody who came off the field. You <laughs> no. University no. Education with understanding of proper procedure and so on. Yes. Because yes. it doesn't say medical doctor doesn't mean that you don't understand how things work. Exactly. Yeah. It's a scientific education. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm familiarized with working in the lab and proper procedure and, uh, and control. Yes. That's, that's, uh, uh, and I worked many years in the pharmaceutical industry uh, with high regulated environment. Uh, right. but, but my point is that we saw results, okay? And then I started reverse engineering and, and, and finding an explanation of what I was seeing and able to replicate it as well, okay? And in the, in the context of being safe, 
then that's why I started developing the products. Uh, and the other thing is that because I'm not a medical doctor uh, and, and profiting from having a practice and clinic and people coming over, the other thing that I, that I keep in mind is uh, give autonomy to people. So my products are a tool and people can use it to, to have control of their health without having a practitioner in between. So, so it is a resource for yeah. them to work on their health. Yeah, it's to self-administer. I just remembered one story that really touched me, which was when you offered it to some people who were using CPAP machine, PAP machine, breathing machine. Oh, the CPAPs, yes. Yeah, that. And so normally they would have this little solution to keep the uh, moisture in the in the lungs and all of that. So you put that same solution into that. I remember the story of this one woman who after three months stopped needing to use yes. the CPAP machine because she was restored. Her she oxygen was... improved, her uh, breathing improved, and and her, uh, I think she had some kind of a congestive disease that went away from the process, right? Everybody that has been, that I know of, that, I, that have been adding it to the CPAP, they no longer use the CPAP anymore. Yeah. I have, everybody has outgrown the CPAP. Three months. The, that, that uh, this one lady, she was pretty much fired from her pulmonologist. She had tried all the medications, all the technologies and uh, steroids, and she still had this issue. Uh, within the first week, she was able to, to breathe, she didn't have the, the all the mucosity. Uh, she was she was more energized, and then she continued to use it. And yeah, within three months, I think that was it. Yeah, she no longer used it. And then I had this other lady, which pretty much once once a month had to go to the hospital with a crisis. Then they put her on medication. She will get better two three weeks, and then goes back to the same situation. And within one month, she didn't need. She started not needing the CPAP. When she would get up in the uh, in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, she wouldn't put it back on. And then within a month, she wouldn't use it altogether. And she told me, "It's like, oh, I don't want to be responsible for this. I didn't tell you to do that. I was concerned." She's like, "No, I don't need it anymore." Uh, yeah. So nobody has. Uh, everybody has outgrown the CPAP. Yeah. Of, of the of the people that I know of. It's not that it's always going to work like that. Well, okay, so we, then... We always have to put a caveat on it, but still, the story yeah. is quite encouraging and impressive. Oh, absolutely. You know, we have... Uh, it, uh, we put a load on the product expectations, but it's not necessarily <laughs> what it's doing. The product always works. People ask me, oh, what if it doesn't work? You guarantee the product... I don't. You do. I know you. Uh, I, I don't guarantee guarantee. everything because I don't. I don't need the hassle. The product is not so expensive. It is not at all. It and is not at all when you see all that that it can do. But it's. It is like I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this story, and I'm. I'm not going off order here. Um, I put some weight during the winter, and I'm like, okay, you know, I need to. I need to lose weight. And then I'm thinking it, I got a thought, it's like, how about if I soak more often because I know that it improved the, you know, uh, the metabolism, it improved it. How about if I soak every day, maybe the, me the metabolism goes back to when I was younger and I had no problem with eating. I could eat whatever I wanted and I never gained weight. So I soak, this is like last month, I soak every day for two weeks. Okay, and I also did uh, sauna just because I was soaking so much. I'm thinking I need to keep, okay. you know. Tell a, me about a, the, tell me about the dosage. So your bathtub is what twenty five gallons of water? Uh, well, half like two thirds, half of my standard top, and I just put two ounces. Two ounces. Okay, and I soak between twenty to thirty minutes every day. Uh, so my fifteen day. Check came and, and I didn't lose any weight easily. And I'm thinking it didn't work, but you know, no big deal. 
it was just an experiment. A few weeks uh, went, by, uh, went by and I started thinking back. So this is what happens in those two weeks, okay? So the whole process will take an hour and a half of my time. By the time that I set up the top and then go into the zone and all that, it was about an hour and a half. So it's shortened my day by an hour and a half. In those two weeks, I accomplished more things, okay? After dinner, I will go and run errands instead of running errands in the morning and then taking from my productive time. I went twice as much to the gym. I tried a new class that I wanted to try and I never had the energy to try mm -hmm. and I was sleeping better. Okay. Okay, so I'm thinking it didn't work because I wanted to lose weight, but it worked. It, I, it was just the body, you know, needed for something else. It wasn't so. That's what happened with most people. They have an agenda for the product. Yeah. Because that's what they want to see, but it's not necessarily the way it's going to work with your body. So it works. It works very good. Now, before before doing that, my 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 body was tapping into the energy hierarchy, and after dinner. I was good for nothing. I would just sit on the couch. Don't talk to me. I'm exhausted because yeah. now digestion is taking too much energy. I didn't have energy for anything else. Mm -hmm. But I, when I was soaking regularly, I would have dinner, clean up, and I would go run errands. All right. you know, so that's that's the difference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And who knows what else? I slowed down well, some process there. But you still have the 20 pounds you wanted to lose? <laughs> Then <laughs> don't push it. Yeah, I still, but you know what? I feel I feel much better. No, they're coming down, but but I I am at least I'm finishing the classes now. Before I was just too tired to even finish. All right. So all right. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh what else to say? Oh well, I'm being reminded of, of so many examples. Like one of them was a fellow that was in the long COVID. Like he was bedridden. He could not get up. Right. And I remember the story where he started doing the inhalations and it, it should be explained, right? Like you, you create this 2% solution, put it into a nebulizer, inhale it for 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, I use, I use 3% during the, during COVID yeah. because, and, and the way it, you know, people, people anguish about the dosages yeah. and, and it's not, and it's not such a big deal. The, the thing is uh, I will prepare it. My friend, you like this one? How about this one? Oh, this one is better. Okay, can you breathe? Okay, well, that's the dosage. Okay, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it was. That's what it right. was. And right. then 15, 20 minutes, that's because the machine that I had, uh, it, it, it will run out of water after 15 minutes. So I'm like, okay, 15 minutes, 3%, that's the, that's the COVID formula. Yeah. That's, how, that's how it came about. Uh, you know, I, I had a few incidents, and these were quite a few of them, maybe half a dozen of them, where people were so weak that they couldn't sit down to hold, to be next to the machine to breathe. And, and also they were using a diffuser or a room humidifier where they were nearby or next to it, but it was not like holding it like that. And, and it would hold more volume. So these people, they started breathing, they will relax, they fall asleep, breathing it. So they were breathing this solution for two or three hours. And then they were waking up on the other side, like what happened? So people that were very uh, ill with COVID, they were recovering faster than the people that were not so ill because they were only doing 15 minutes, two, three times a day. But these people that were breathing for, for a few hours, they had like a shock treatment and they were recovering faster. Right. Um, right. Anyway, but the, so the, example, the example I wanted to use was the, the sequence of things because I remember this fellow couldn't get out of bed. He did the breathing. The next morning he got out of bed and just did household chores and felt okay. On the second day went for a walk and on a third day went for a run. Yes, yes. Right. I mean, this That's... was this was after weeks, many weeks of being bedridden and completely useless. And in three yes. weeks, I mean, three days. That's 
Yeah, that was uh, interesting for me to see with long COVID, how people were in this cycle of not getting any better. And then they were, they were briefing the product and then just coming out of it. So yeah. I was wondering like for how long they were gonna go like that. And then in the meantime, now the, there is poor oxygenation systemically and other things are gonna start, you know, deteriorating. Right, which, yeah. which reminds me, right? Like there's this concept of Lyme and concept of Epstein-Barr and all of these other viral conditions that are all immunodeficient in very analogous way to what we're describing here. And so yes. I would like people to get this idea that we don't know what to tell them, but we believe that they should try this when they have a long-term thing that they would call Lyme or something. Exactly. Try this. Every, everybody, everybody that, that has, I mean, everybody should use this, whether it's two times or whatever, you know, it, just to, just to uh, it hyperoxygenate, catch up, okay? And everybody that has a chronic situation, they should look into, uh, uh, into soaking off the, at the very minimum. And I want to talk about it because it's so important. If there is anything taken from this is, the oral hygiene, okay? Uh -huh. At the very minimum, they should address oral hygiene, doing mouthwash and doing switch and, and, and because that is the, the root of a lot of chronic problems. And it might not be directly connected to what they have, but if your body has to deal with contamination coming from your mouth, now you're, they're competing with trying to get you, to get you better. Right, yeah, it's it puts a very large burden on your immune system. And yes, so, and it's easily fixed. I I have found that a small volume of water works well for me. Like for me, a teaspoon is about the amount that I want to put in my mouth, so I can move it around my mouth really well. So I have used two drops in one teaspoon and just push it around for several minutes, trying to find every pocket that there may be in my mouth around the gums. In the side where is the healthy mouth is sealed pretty yeah. much. But in yeah. the in the side where you have tar and inflammation, uh, it does bidirectional. So in the same way that that you get that, you know, uh, uh, anaerobic bacteria competing uh, with your uh, healthy uh, oral biome, then you also have, you know, it penetrating and it can get into your into your into your bloodstream. Oh yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah, it okay? does circulate. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It's it's uh, you know, I wanna I wanna talk about nitric oxide because it, it's something that 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 people need to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an expert in nitric oxide, okay, and and I know that is important for. Uh, that, that we that we have the proper bacteria uh, to help uh, the nitric oxide, but that is just a percentage that is produced there. And I think I read somewhere that is 25%. The other 75 is done uh, inside the body. So for one thing, when you have good adequate oxygenation in your body, it's going to improve the production of nitric oxide because it happens in the presence of oxygen, okay? So when that improves, you're gonna rely less in the one that is produced in the mouth, okay? The other thing is to produce nitric oxide, uh, and it's actually the nitrate from the food to the nitrite, and then to the nitric oxide that goes to your stomach, you also need a food source. So if you are not uh, eating food that has nitrate, don't worry so much about what is being converted because you don't have the source of the bacteria. And, and the other thing is, for some people, it's not negotiable. You need to kill all that bad bacteria, wipe out. It takes three to four days to build back up. So it, it's not a forever thing. It takes three to four days to regenerate to the, to the bacteria that you had before sterilizing your mouth. But you got to wipe out because even for that a healthy bacteria that you need, having anaerobic bacteria and contaminants there 
is is not allowing them to do the job that they're supposed to do. So for people that have sensitive teeth, uh, any gum disease, people that wear masks, that they are constantly breathing through the, uh, uh, mouth breathers, people that snore, uh, people that use the CPAP, they need to clean the bacteria in their mouth. I mean, that that is that can be a reason. If they don't know why they don't feel good, it could be that could be the problem. Right. Or one of the major problems. And so the practice, just to be clear, would be two drops into a bit of water and yeah, one or two drops into a mouthful of water. That's all that they that they need. And do that they, once a day, twice a day? I like to do it twice a day. I mean, I don't worry about nitric oxide at all. I, well, yeah, I mean, nitric oxide, people may not remember what it's all about. This has to do everything with your blood pressure regulation. Nitric oxide is involved in flexibility of your arteries, their ability to expand and contract. So if you don't have enough of that, you have stiff arteries, and that leads to high blood pressure. And the other effect it has, of course, is the sexual response. You need to be able to allow engorgement, fluids, mm -hmm. blood, whatever. I mean, men who do not maintain an erection usually have a nitric oxide problem. Yes, exactly. So it's like everything else. For some people, it's important, uh, the, the, the portion that happens in the mouth, okay? And, uh, and they need to make sure that they have the proper uh, bacteria to help them convert to nitrite and to support the nitric oxide. Right on. Okay. Lovely. Um, so that's uh, so. Then we have the one, the one for the food, for the food. I had notes here, so you touch about it. How important it is. The food is very neglected. It doesn't have a, a good circulation. It doesn't have good oxygenation, and uh, and it helps a lot to do a uh, food bath because it helps to detach contaminants uh, from the food. When, uh, I mean, I see people that start doing food soak and their skin looks like 20 years younger. <laughs> yeah, it yes. gets hydrated and, yes, and it yes. gets, you know, because one of the things that amazing soap does is, is to promote regeneration of new cells. Uh -huh. So that that is really good for, uh, for the food. It's not, I'm gonna repeat it, it's not for fungal infection on the toe, that is, that is more profound. That is a, a more of a systemic problem. So you figure you, uh, dropping the uh, amazing soak onto the toes is not strong enough? No, 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 no. It's not gonna, that is not and gonna what, work what about like doing that. it systemically? So what if I swallow 10, 20 drops of the amazing soak every day for ongoing? Uh, you know, it, Fungus are very resilient and they thrive on the same thing that we thrive. Carbohydrate. So, so for in order to eradicate fungus, it's, it's going to be putting a toll on us. The amazing soap won't, won't do that. We can support other things. We can help with parasites, but fungus, I haven't seen much. No, like uh, yeah, I haven't seen much with fungus. Right. Uh, so this one uh, uh, is a son of one of my friends, and uh, it was a soccer practice. So he, yeah, his ankle, he had an ankle sprain, and they were in a hotel, you know, it was an out of town uh, practice, and she had amazing soak with her. So she soaked in the, in, the, in the wastebasket container in the hotel, that's all they had there. And and look at the other, at the, at the picture of the ankle is completely yeah, it just comes down uh, yeah. it's completely down and then the, there is one that is knee inflammation so the ankle was soaking the knee inflammation that one was with a wet wrap yeah. okay so so this lady she just had knee surgery uh three days prior it was all inflamed yeah i wrapped I mean, it looked a, like bucket of yeah i wrapped a saturated a, a rack a, a, with the amazing soak uh, was about a one and a half percent solution and that was 20 minutes later how the inflammation went down that's incredible that's, that's i know it's uh it's it's pretty unbelievable okay so we talk about how people were recovering from covid uh and how good it is with the cpap and all that so the the blue flames that's the normal flames of the stove okay 
Now, a diffuser was turned on in the adjacent room and it, you know, maybe half hour later, uh, they turn on the flames again to cook something and then there are red flames. And they were Which wondering- There's not as much uh, oxygen present, right? No, there is too much. So what happens is the gas is uh, is graded uh, to interact with the air and then, you know, uh, the proper ratio. Yes. So now when there was too much oxygen, uh, it was, uh, the ratio was off. So it, it shows on inefficient burning. That's what it shows the red. Right. So when somebody has that, the technician comes and adjusts it to the proper ratio with the amount of oxygen present in the air. So the, the amount of ionized oxygen, which was on the other room, okay, it, it increased the oxygen level in the air to the point where, the, where the, the flame couldn't keep up with it. And it was showing inefficient burning, okay? And that happens, I mean, this happened to be in the adjacent room. That happens even in two stories houses where they are running the humidifier in the bedroom and then when then they wake up in the morning to put to, to put their coffee, the flames are red. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's 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 a, a good visual. So people see how effective it is when they are breathing this and the amount of ionized oxygen that they are taking in. And the word ionized is important because it means that it will transfer into the body and into the body fluids without having to to be uh, a, a expense of energy and without having to go through the process of respiration, which makes it more effective mm -hmm. and get to the cell in a larger amount. Right on. Okay, so, you know, with the, with the oral hygiene, uh, I, do, I do about five minutes, I hold it, not every day, okay? Uh, every so often I just do five minutes just to make sure if I have anything, uh, that can penetrate the gums. I had people, I have a, I have a case, this lady, she, she purchased amazing soap for her horse that was gonna be put to sleep because he had an infection that was getting to the bone. So she soaked the, the leg of the horse and it works very good. It worked very good. And then the husband had been dealing with this pain. And of course, now it's Friday, they, they, they cannot see him until Monday. And then he says, well, why don't you give me some of what you gave to the horse? Because if it treats the infection in the horse, maybe it can help with my root canal. So it did to the point that Monday morning, he said, maybe I should cancel because it wasn't hurting anymore. Uh, and I had other situations like that with people with a really bad toothache yeah. and then they soak and hold it and it penetrates the gum you know, the root of yeah. the of the tooth and it eases the pain. Yeah, it kills the infection, which of course it that's why yeah. you're hurting, right? So let's talk about ingesting amazing soap. Right. Or or amazing oil. So um amazing oil is just a little bit more concentrated and it's in a fancier uh container with a dropper. So it makes it easy for for when you're using drops. That that that's all it is. Uh, but uh, the smaller size of amazing soak, uh, it would also do, even though it's a little bit more diluted, but you can use, you know, the exact dose is not that important. Okay, so when I'm talking about amazing soak, that also applies for amazing oak. Uh, so with the, the ingestion was actually the first way in that I use this product for health, okay? Uh, I had been living overseas. I had parasites, and and that's how I, I started taking amazing. Uh, oh, I'm gonna say amazing oh because it was in a dropper with water. I was taking uh, I was taking it uh, quite a bit for a week, and then I saw that it was uh, it it got rid of the parasites. But then I saw that my energy was better, so I continued taking it for for two weeks. Uh, my sugar cravings were gone. My health was better. And what was the dosage? Uh, that was quite a bit. That was about 10 drops in a glass of water. And I was taking it like twice a, twice a day twice a because it was for parasites. Yeah. And then I started taking, you know, for about two weeks. And then I said, you know, I cannot be taking this much. It's, it's too bleachy. <clears throat> but I think that if I take more, 
it's going to benefit. So I, I was taking about five, four or five drops in a glass of water <clears throat> every day for seven months. And I had some viral, uh, viral infections. When I would get stressed out, I would get these patches on my skin. I think I show you pictures of that. I would get it on my belly, on my waist. They were like, uh, like a dry patch of skin and they would get very itchy. Those disappeared. I had rhino uh, syndrome or rhino phenomenon, which is a condition where when, you ex when you're exposed to cold, the body protects itself by uh, not uh, uh, controlling the blood that goes to your fingers or to your toes, and then they will get poor circulation and they will get purple, they, they will hurt. Uh, so that went away and I live in Chicago and it was the first time since I moved here probably the 20 some years before that where I was able to enjoy the winter because before it will be very uncomfortable, very painful. Mm -hmm. uh, also a huge one was that my basal temperature increased uh, before I would get cold very, very easily. And with this, uh, after doing that, after the seven months, and the reason was seven months is it came with my annual checkup and I had a thorough panel of testing, just checking everything and everything was perfect. And then I said, okay, I don't need to do this anymore. And that's when I when I stopped. Um, and so but, uh, this, but that was to be that was again. This was what five drops in a glass twice a day. Yes, but but I don't know if that is enough that much suffering. The only reason I did five drops was because I started adding and adding, and then at the sixth drop, I'm thinking, oh, this this is too much, so I just put it in uh, five drops. But I think I have on the I think I have on the recipe, uh, which we're gonna show, uh, two drops in the glass of water long term is plenty. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I really didn't need to be suffering that much. I, I don't think you know. But this, again, how can we measure what the body does with this oxygen? We don't measure it. The only thing is, I knew that the bleacher, the taste, the more, the more extra product I was gonna have to do whatever it was supposed to be doing. Yeah. That that was that was so. All right. Uh, so, so when you ingest, this is this is what the what it does. So the first thing that it does is it's going to eradicate any infection that you have. So people that has H. pylori, people that has any infection, okay, is going to address that. Uh, so that's the magical letter SIBO, uh, intestine. Uh, you know. Most most infections in the stomach are non uh, are asymptomatic. Yes, true. Okay, so people might have an infection that they're asymptomatic, but then they have issues maintaining a good uh, uh, biome. Yeah. Okay, or they yeah. might have other issues uh, uh, with absorbing nutrients. Okay, so so we address infections. We eliminate inflammation in the lining of the stomach, okay? That is a very, very big one because when the inflammation is present, okay, so now we're talking about people might have an infection they don't know about, they don't, have, they don't see symptoms. There is inflammation because of infection and, and other things going on. So now the valve that pump the digestive uh, 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 enzymes they are not working so properly because there is inflammation, okay? Uh, and other things that are not working properly, food is not getting digested, uh, 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 you know, all the way. So the body is not able to absorb the nutrients because they're not degraded, they're not break, broken down mm -hmm. in the simplest form, okay? Anybody that, that has digest, digestive issues, uh, that that has diarrhea, constipation, uh, anything related uh, that that have a lot of sensitive stomach, they should they should try this. They should try this. Address inflammation. When you start, when the inflammation is is 
under control and also the biofilm is going to 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 eliminate the biofilm when inflammation is under control and then people start absorbing better mm -hmm. okay their energy is going to go up the other thing is that we're going to help break down contaminants that are lingering in the stomach so less contaminants are carrying on to the to the blood and the blood is going to be able to increase their capacity to carry oxygen mm -hmm. Okay, and if you have inflammation in your stomach, then you have a leaky stomach that is gonna allow to pass things that are not supposed to be passing. And now the blood is gonna have more contamination because it's gonna be invaded by these things. Right. Okay, the, the thing with, with uh, uh, this ingesting it, people, and, and this is one of the things that is really good with the soak, the systemic soak, that it, most people can see results very fast and people like it, okay? They have been with chronic problems for 10 years, whatever, they have gone to 20 doctors, but they want amazing soap to work right away. In, in two or two, two, and, and many times we deliver that expectation. With the stomach, it takes a little longer, okay? It's not so obvious. So people need to stick with it a little bit to start seeing results. Okay, mm -hmm. I, sh I show you all the, re all the results that happened with me in the long term improvement on my health, but I took it seven months. Yeah, I, I would like to address the concern somebody asked me, well, does it not kill the microbes? You just told me it kills microbes. So what does it kill when I ingest it? In the microbes in the stomach, it doesn't get to the biome in your gut. Oxygen doesn't last that long. It doesn't carry on to your to your gut. All right. Okay. Right. It will address infections in the stomach. Not beyond. Not beyond the stomach. No. All right. Not beyond the stomach. No. I mean, what it's gonna help your biome because if you have a infection in your stomach, that is also affecting your biome. Of course. Yeah. So when you are eradicating that then the healthier bacteria in your in your biome is going to be able to recuperate better to you know to bring to a proper balance very good we are we are an oxygenating uh, solution and we can deliver hydroxy radicals and and that's that's considered like a bad boy see a red light around a blue uh molecule Actually, those are HeLa cells. I don't know if you know about the HeLa cells. But mm -hmm. uh, you know what I want them to see is that hydroxy radical is just light, it's energy, okay? They are very, very small. They, they were just able to identify them, I think less than 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. with this With these uh, uh, translucent uh, markers. So they're just light, it's just energy. And that's what it is. And the other one shows a different group of cells and, and the hydroxy radical are the red, the red light. And uh, what happens with the hydroxy radical is that is the only oxygen species for which the body has no a counterpart, okay? Because it's the highest energy level. So when the hydroxy radical is, is called uh, uh, for action, it, that was the last resource of the mitochondria. It, everything else has failed, okay? So the, the bad rep about it is that whenever there is a oxidative stress, chronic inflammation, a situation you know, of, of uh, dysfunction, they can identify the presence of the hydroxy radical. So he said, okay, if there is no hydroxy radical, we don't have these bad situations present, but what they're finding out now is that maybe the role of the hydroxy radical was helping in that situation and not being the bad boy. Just because there is not a, an, en an enzymatic, a, a, an enzyme that can counter, counteract the hydroxy radical doesn't mean that it has to be eliminated. Anyhow, you see the, the one with the, with the red light, okay. Yeah, this is the one, the hydroxyl OH as opposed yeah. to OH minus. Exactly. So, uh, so I believe that one way in that we help with the uh, chronic inflammation is 
So, so the chronic inflammation, let me, let, me, let me say inflammation and chronic inflammation. Inflammation is the natural immune response, which is very good uh, because it protects us. So now, uh, chronic inflammation is, is when that inflammation doesn't resolve and then it stays and, and there is a situation of oxidative stress, which is too many oxidants and not enough anti antioxidants, okay? But the oxidants are trying to go after something that is attacking us. So with chronic inflammation, the, the cause of, of, of the inflammation is no longer, it might not even longer be present. There is a, 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 there is a, a situation of dysfunction where it doesn't go back to normal and it start affecting other functionalities. And inflammation we identify with swelling, but that's only one of the symptoms. It could be pain, uh, it could be, uh, well, it could be redness, heat. Redness, swelling, pain, heat, and loss of function. And then it could be loss of, of function, yes. <laughs> and the other thing that it can be is uh, adaptation, okay? Right. So, so we are amazing so is going to eliminate chronic inflammation, okay? Because we are an equilibrating agent and we're gonna restore homeostasis. Now, people need to understand that dysfunction is not the same as homeostasis, okay? There could be a dysfunctional cell, but it's in equilibrium and we no longer can help with that situation, it's not reversible, okay? Uh, for example, there has not been adequate oxygenation in this body for a while. The process of converting energy, okay, went from aerobic to, to an aerobic form. Okay, aerobic is much more uh, efficient, but there wasn't enough oxygen. So they start using glucose without oxygen to convert to ATP and then and, and do the functions. Now, those cells might just have changed and adapt their metabolism to, to an anaerobic way of producing energy. So now the person comes and let's call it cancer, just to put it a name. Now the person comes and soak, okay? And a lot of other chronic inflammatory processes reverse because now there is plenty of oxygen, but that one, it's not, it's not out of equilibrium. It, it found a, a, a way around when there was not enough oxygen and it has a different way of converting to energy and it's not reversing back, even if there is plenty of oxygen. That's what is called metabolic inflexibility. Right. So some things we might not be able to reverse because the body adapted to when there was not enough oxygen or whatever other situation. So. I just want to make a distinction between a dysfunctional mitochondria and, and a cell where there is a, a, a not, a, not in equilibrium, okay? We restore the redox equilibrium, okay? And most of the time that comes with a dysfunction, but a dysfunction could also be in equilibrium, right on. okay? So let's talk about, um, so this, you get the two ounce bottle, delivered uh, uh, to your house ship under $30, done. Now, with one little bottle of two ounces, you prepared a gallon of, uh, of oral hygiene, okay? So this person, they don't think that they have a problem, but they, but they are aware of, you know what? I have some tooth sensitivity. It's better that I address that, you know? And sometimes, you know, my digestion is not too good, but in overall, they consider themselves healthy. So with one, two ounces, they're able to prepare one gallon of mouth hygiene, which is gonna last them over a month or two months, depending how much they use for the mouthwash. They're gonna be doing uh, a digestive support. Okay, so they're gonna be addressing any infection that they have in the stomach. They're gonna be doing uh, inhalations, okay? Improving, uh, one thing I wanna say is, as bad as the food, could be with the uh, contaminants and uh, spraying insecticide and the water that has contaminants, whatever. Most of the contaminants are in the air. Hmm. So we are always, always going to be needing to detox and to be addressing 
and helping the body to deal with contaminations. Because as long as you're alive and breathing, you're gonna be getting contaminants. And so yeah. would you suggest that then inhaling the um, uh, yes. mist is a good idea? Frequently? It's a very good idea, yeah. Every so often inhaling is a very good idea. I think uh, I think I, I I heard that it was 64% of the of the contaminants are airborne. Okay. They come from the air. Uh, so, you know, a sinus ring, a, a hand soak. So a hand soak is, you know, some people get, uh, they have like arthritis, they have the hands that, that bother them. And then they like to, they like to soak the hands and that helps a lot. So a facial mist, you know, this person sometimes get, you know, pimples, whatever. The multi-purpose, that's what I use for deodorant uh, and the food soak. So look at all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight applications with one small ounce, uh, with a two ounce container of amazing soap. Right on. Okay. The other one is uh, the eight ounces. So what can we do with eight ounces? So this person, you know, probably got COVID. It's not quite back to normal. Uh, overall, you know, okay. So I think I can benefit from using it. So they got an eight ounces, the same. They can do the oral hygiene, inhalation, digestion, sinus ring, facial mist, multiple food soak. And now they're able to do two, two soaks. Okay, which I call the first one oxygenating soak because I feel that uh, the first soak is gonna go to replenish the oxygen deficit overall. And then it's going to help the, the uh, you know, kind of boost the metabolic system. When you do the second soak, that's when things start happening. The, the, the body, the first one was uh, more of a little bit of catching up. The second one is gonna, now the body is more ready to, to, to heal and to, to address some chronic situations. Okay, so that's what I, that it shows here. And then with the, the third one, the the 16 ounces so this person knows that uh, that they have a problem okay that they have been dealing with a chronic situation uh, they probably are uh, waiting for an appointment with one specialist they probably don't even know which specialist to go this is so good to remove noise okay so th this person is not feeling well if they do this with one with one bottle of 16 ounce, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 16, 16 uses. It's not 16 uses, 16 applications. Uh, four of them, they are preparing a gallon size, which is gonna last them a few months. So if they take one bottle of amazing soak, 16 ounces, and they do all of this, I guarantee you, uh, that a lot of the symptoms that they have are going to go away and the, and the ones that are still lingering, they will know which doctor to go and maybe the regular doctor can help them without them having to go to a specialist because now there is a lot of noise that is being eliminated. Okay, so I see this as a, as a, as a tool uh, uh, for people to streamline and, and and kind of remove like, okay, this is what I need to deal with. Yeah. Okay. And it's gonna be much easier when you show up at a doctor after having done this than going in the beginning with a lot going on, you know? So so when you talk about somebody's gonna get these 16 ounces, $100, how much is three, probably three doctor's appointment by the time that they clear some of the things and having to purchase supplements. Well, we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem justifying the value of the product. This yeah. has never been an issue. It's oh yeah, but some people, you know, they they say, well, why is so expensive? And it's like, what do you call expensive? Well, expensive is relative, right? To somebody who, yeah. might, who doesn't have twenty dollars to buy groceries, this is expensive. But right, I, I hope most people can find the money. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, you know. People, people say, why, why is that price? Because you know they see the ingredients. It's like this is salty water. I, I don't, I don't elaborate. It's like fine, you know. They buy it, and then they said, it. You should charge. They call me. They said you should charge more. 
Because the effect is so profound. Because of the effect of it, yeah. You should charge more. Why so inexpensive? Hundred percent of the time, you should charge more. Yeah. You well, know. We, we contemplated it, but. But I, I mean, the the thing is that they had tried so many things that don't work. I, I get it. And then they said, okay, this is gonna be one more thing. You are not giving me a, a guarantee that it's gonna work. You know, and they they have a, a, a cabinet full of things that didn't work. And and that's what happens. The other thing is when they when they uh, use it for digestive support, they're gonna start having a better response to the supplements because they're gonna be able to digest it better. Yeah. Okay. So so now let's let's touch on the amazing cholerio. We okay, we leave, sure. we leave the last one for the end. Um. Okay. So. I, I said how the amazing Colirio came about. And I researched, you know, I kept, I had probably, I don't know, close to 50 people using it. Uh, then they wanted more. At that point, I have been doing some research, the market research, and it didn't justify uh, the cost of making it competing with the market. So that's when I called you and I said, hey, you know, uh, people keep, wanted this but it's i really need to justify that it's more than just dry eye uh, can we get some people with serious chronic eye problems and that's when we get that email that i yeah, got like 300 solicited about 200 people to uh, yeah to more it. yeah it's, it, it was crazy I, I i didn't uh i was hoping like maybe a, a dozen or two dozen people because who was gonna put a drop in their eye of something that wasn't even that we were testing. Yeah. Um, it was a, but that's how desperate people, these people had tried everything. And and I looked for the, the sickest among the sick. It's like everybody here had a had a real problem. And uh so we did it for two weeks because I didn't need more than that. We don't cure or prevent diseases. So I just did it to to show that it was gonna be acting faster and getting similar results to the more expensive uh, drop so I can justify you know a, 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 a price that makes sense for for me to make it and we were blown away uh, so we had for example in severe dryness uh, in the two weeks we have 80 percent improvement which I believe how much percentage needs a drug to to go into market isn't it like 30 percent improvement yeah like five yeah just about uh so you know so that was that was a big one floaters uh it was 69 percent improvement keep in mind that this was not a a, um, a formal clinical trial this was uh, an anecdotal trial people had the drugs in their homes they use it twice a day i had no control so so there's a variety of, of uh, uh, situations that were not out of my control. And having these high results was huge because it was not a controlled study. It was huge. Uh, for night vision, uh, the improvement was 78%. I had one of those. I had I had poor night vision and, and now I didn't need to wear glasses to drive at night. Okay, so so the other thing that surprised me with these results that you are seeing there is that many of them were over 100%. And mm -hmm. I thought that it was an error in the calculation. Now this Google form, so people understand, I don't have a way of manipulating the data. Google uh, captures the data from the people's emails and then they come and I can, you know, and then I just uh, uh, get the summary. So I don't have a way of, 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 of changing the numbers. And I didn't understand why was that over 100%. And then I saw that it was that people did not report that as a problem in the beginning, but they reported as improvement at the end of the story. So it was either that they didn't think about it or that they didn't think that the drops were gonna help with that particular problem. Yeah. Uh, for example, a bulging eyes, it had 150% improvement because some people said, well, how is this gonna help with bulging eyes? Yeah. So in this one, 
uh, you can see the muscles in the back of the eye globe it, with the bulging eyes, there is inflammation in, the, in those muscles and then it pushes the eye globe out. So uh, amazing cholerio penetrates and, and I'll tell you one of the reasons that the eye drops is so effective, it is the one product that goes directly into a body fluid. So it is very, very effective. Okay, like transdermal oxygenation, it has to go through the skin and all the other applications, you know, the ones that, that you ingest, it has to go through the stomach. With the cholerio, the drop goes directly on the tears and in the body fluid. So it's, it's extremely effective. So then the amazing cholerio went behind the eye globe, resolved that inflammation, and then the, the eye globe was able to sit back a little bit and the bulging uh, improved. Uh, the other thing that shows in this image is the uh, blood vessels inside the eye. And this is, this is a, a space which is full of fluid. So when there is uh, not enough oxygen, okay, that comes from the tears, those uh, vessels, they get closer to the surface to be able to, to try to, to take more oxygen, okay? So this is one reason also that we help so much because uh, we increase the oxygenation in the tears and then it's able, you know, it's able to, the oxygen to penetrate better and then the red eye uh, is eliminated and the, and the vessels, you know, they go back to where they are supposed to be. They are not reaching out. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is not just improved. This is just... This is eliminated, right. Because when they had to do with an active inflammatory process and the and the drops stop that process are going to be eliminated. Yeah. But the main point here is that by increasing the oxygenation in the eye, we are dealing with the issues of the uh, um, well every inflammatory process. So yes, <laughs> that's like... well. The, the thing is that it, it had not been so obvious for some of the issues that they have to do with inflammation. So what we are showing here is like one, one of the ones that I was surprised was about the thick tears and the blocked myobian glands. They had, those had a, had a high uh, also percentage of improvement and I didn't know that it was gonna be uh, uh, affected, you know, the impact so positive with that. But because we uh, fixed the biochemistry of the tears, then that was able to correct itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what surprised me the most was the uh, intraocular pressure, the glaucoma problem. Yeah. Oh, the other thing is, yeah, I, I had uh, uh, people emailing me months after the story saying that when they would go back to their doctors, they had like uh, improvement with the um, macular degeneration mm -hmm. and, and the retina issues. They had improvement with that too. Where those are were long term, we didn't go, you know, we didn't go long term with the story. Yeah, yeah. This this will be a long term process. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. You can't expect one bottle to fix it, but if you stay with it for six months, because this will continually right or or undo right. the wear that you have created. Yeah, I had a. I didn't know the guy, and and he was very uncomfortable. He he had a head cap. He took it off, and then I saw the redness, and and he was obviously uncomfortable. And I said, does it hurt? He says, yeah, it's kind of burned, but I, I've learned not to scratch it because it makes it worse. So I said, well, I have something, let me try this. So I had a OSH mist on my purse. I always keep it. I sprayed and, and he told me after 10 minutes, he's like, wow, you know, it feels calmer. And he put the cap on and went on his way and I didn't see the guy again. So the next day I get a phone call. We were on a boat together from the owner of the boat and say, hey, this guy that you spray something, he called me, he, want to, he wants to find you. He told me that, that he couldn't believe this morning how good his forehead was. So I was like, oh, wow. So I sent him, I said, send him this picture that I took of him yesterday and ask him to try to do, to take it from the same angle so I can see the difference. So that's the second picture there that he sent me. And of course, he became a customer after that. Uh, and then I <laughs> yes. have the one for, for, the, for the femur surgery. 
Uh, so he, this guy had a yeah he had a bad femur uh, intervention there a big a big a wound and this one was with a wet uh, compresses so he he had to ice uh, the leg every day so then I said okay when you ice it uh, just just soak the the towel uh, with the solution and then put the ice on top so it will penetrate and and the second so you see in a week how much it improved. Yeah, yeah the, doc I mean, the all, doctors all that, and the nurse, they couldn't believe it. All the bruising and the hematomas and all yes. that. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, yes, there is uh, a lot you can do with it. And of course, every place on the body or in the body and every surface can be improved. So of course, the intimate areas are something that people don't like to talk about, but... I will share a story with you that is going to blow your mind. I had a woman call me in tears, crying. She had chronic uh, inflammation on her urethra. She was having to intubate to every day, right? Like she would have, have to put in a catheter. Mm -hmm. And she hurt and she hurt. And I said, look, take the 2% solution and just spray, spray it right over the business area, right over the urethra, right over the opening. Just open your legs, spray it on. She called me on the third day in tears saying, I cannot believe it. The pain is gone. The inflammation has gone. I'm comfortable doing it. I have had years of horrendous pain. It's all gone. Oh, wow. Wow. Right? What yeah, do you mean? I... Yep, I I had I had the same feedback from people with recurrent uh, infections and uh, uh, it, it inflamed uh, it, that hurt to go to the bathroom that hurt to to have sex and and they do a uh, vaginal uh, how they call it vaginal is it a douche douching vaginal you yes yeah and and I have a recipe for that in the in the chart for using it and then really, really good um, positive feedback from using in enemas and colonic. Of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've used it myself in colonics. My technician uh, it knows the product well, knows me well, we use it. And, and I have been seeing her for like five or six years. And when we started using with amazing soap, it's day and night. It's very, very, very effective. Uh, and, and the other thing is, uh, People need to detox. So this is a very good detox support when you are using it systemically. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so so this can accelerate the effect of doing it systemically because now you're improving detox. But people need to detox. Okay. Because uh, the, the systemic effect is going to work as long as the body can get rid of the metabolic waste. And, and I have some of the recipes for detox. The, the digestive support is going to help with detox. All right. Emma, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. First of all, thank you for being so brave as to go there, discover this, release it, work relentlessly. This is a small business. This is not easy, we, as we all know. I mm -hmm. remember the disasters of trying to find the right lid to fit on the right bottle during the shortage of things and yes. all the all the bad feedback people would give because they would spill something and then they feel, oh my God, this smells like bleach. I am destroying something. Like we have <laughs> had very fearful people calling. I've had, uh, just the other day, I sent a bottle of Colirio to somebody who said, it does not have a protective st strip around the bottle. I feel uncertain using it. Yeah, I the, said, the okay, box, I know. Bottle. But I tell you, I mean, there's nothing going to survive in that environment. Yeah, well, I it, it doesn't being an issue. It's, it's just when you're a small producer, it's not easy to source, you know, certain things because they want you to buy 20,000 at a time. No. And uh, it's just being a challenge, you know. I, I mean, I seal the box and, and it's not in a store. So it goes from the lab to the customer. So now that I'm doing it, I'm just bagging it, the amazing Colirio. So 
Yeah, I understand what you're doing. What I'm trying to say is that because we're doing this in a small business style, it takes a lot of energy and I want to applaud you for just doing it because it's- Yeah, it's well, you know, it's helping people. I get a lot of satisfaction from doing this. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I hope that people get, you know, that uh, get to use it uh, and, uh, uh, um, and share the testimonials. I mean, you have no idea. Uh, it, it, how much we appreciate those we learn uh, other people learn uh, a, a, your customers are very creative I mean I see I've heard things that they do with the product and I would have never thought about it oh the other thing that we didn't mention is interaction with other supplements okay uh, I wanted to say that uh, other than a, a probiotics okay I wouldn't use it like you can take uh, the digestive support, you can ingest amazing soap, wait five minutes, and then you can have your probiotics, okay? I have tested amazing soap with uh, carbon C60. They don't counteract each other. And when you take them together, I found it to work better, a lot better. Uh, I've taken with vitamin C. I found it to, that the vitamin C works a lot better when you take it with, uh, with water, with amazing soap or amazing oil. Uh, and uh, it, it, some people, they don't, they cannot get past the bleachy uh, taste. And what they settle for is they just put it in their tea in the morning. And even those people, they find benefit from it, uh, which I think is because uh, it is going to help them to uh, absorb the nutrients for the herbs better. So, you know, so there is, just because something is an antioxidant doesn't mean that we're going to neutralize it because an antioxidant is a role when the when that substance is inside the body okay so if we can be together without affecting each other and then when the body needs the antioxidant it's there to use i haven't seen really much of of taking amazing soak and neutralizing antioxidants. I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's actually quite incredible because the other popular product that's known as MMS or the oxychlor, mm -hmm. they tell you that if you take it and take too much, the antidote is to take vitamin C. Oh, and I see. In, in your case, you can say clearly, oh no, you can take no. it with vitamin C. You can take it with Yes, blue. you can take yeah. it with whatever else you want to take. Yeah, there are two products in the market that that combine this technology with vitamin C and need uh, to enhance the effect of vitamin C. Great. This has been Emma Flanagan and her amazing, amazing products. And this is Martin Pitella for Life Enthusiast podcast. You can find us at life-enthusiast.com and by phone at 866-543-3388. I thank you.